Here's my lawn a year after my renovation. I'm going to show you exactly what I did to get to this point and it's it's really easy to do but it's a lot of information so I actually have a playlist linked in the description that goes over all the steps in more detail it also has videos of uh, different problems I ran into um, and different tips different things I tried that some worked some didn't and you might want to try it but this video is more about showing the most important steps giving you an idea of how much time and effort it's going to take so that way you can decide for yourself if you want to do a full lawn renovation. Now by a renovation I mean killing off everything and completely starting over. If you just want to overseed basically you're going to do all the same steps except you're not going to use the glyphosate to kill off the lawn. So you can still use these steps if you're overseeding it's just a little bit different you don't want to kill everything you want to leave it there. Now the reason you would renovate is twofold. One, if you've got so many weeds that it's just totally out of control, you want to start over. Or two, if you're trying to change the type of grass you have. Sometimes, this is how my lawn was when I moved in, there are all these different types of grass throughout the lawn and so it looked really uneven. Throughout the season it would always look different in areas around the, the lawn and it just didn't look good so I wanted to completely renovate it so it would be all the same grass type on the whole lawn and it just looks a lot better that way so if that's what you're looking to do uh, grab a coffee watch the video and uh, enjoy the most important part of a renovation is the grass seed I got mine from seed superstore it was sod quality seed which means you're not gonna have weed seeds in it and it was a custom blend of Kentucky bluegrass. I had Bewitched, Blue Velvet, and Prosperity types. And they have a seed customizer tool where you can put in whatever percentages. Um, now that's going to depend on your area and your taste. But they have you know tons of grass seeds and all that stuff. So the key here is you want sod quality seed. Now you can do a renovation with seed at the box stores. But there's going to be weed seed in there. And typically the seed types of seed they're using aren't at the same level as sod so do your homework look around I would really suggest you go to seed superstore obviously there are other places that sell sod quality but you're gonna get the best bang for your buck long term by having sod quality seed the next thing you're gonna do is you're gonna need starter fertilizer now I actually prefer starter fertilizer that is um, the Scott's Blue Bag starter fertilizer with mesotrione in it. It's my favorite starter fertilizer because mesotrione or tenacity will prevent weeds from germinating while allowing the grass to germinate. And so it's just another measure to prevent weeds from coming into your lawn because if you're doing all this work you want to do everything you can to prevent weeds. The next thing you're going to need is glyphosate. Now glyphosate is going to kill everything, well almost everything it touches. It doesn't actually uh, kill nut sedge, which is interesting. Um, but you can get this in concentrates. Um, I got it at Tractor Supply and you just get a big jug and you follow the directions to mix it so you end up saving a lot of money that way. Um, if you want to use the, the brand Roundup, just be sure you get the Roundup that doesn't last for multiple months and it's going to just have the ingredient glyphosate in it. That's going to kill all the weeds, the existing grass and everything which will allow you to do your renovation. And then the next thing you're going to absolutely need, I think this is a must, is peat moss. Now the peat moss is going to give you an awesome growing bed for your seed. It germinates so much better. Um, some people skip this step but I think if you're going to go through all this work, you're going to be heartbroken if it doesn't germinate. And then the last uh, trick up my sleep, if you're seeding onto a hill, I would suggest that you get some tachifier. Now tachifier, you can think of it like Elmer's glue. It just holds the peat moss and the seed to the soil. So if you happen to get three inches of rain like I did in a spring seeding project, that won't wash away. Without the tachifier, all that hard work, if it rains too much, just washes away. I've seen people with photos of 
you know, their their entire lawn just in the road now, and they gotta shovel it up and start all over. And if you're seen on the hill, definitely get tag fire. It was pretty cheap. It was, I think, ten or twenty bucks at a local seed, uh, a local landscape supply store, and uh, yeah, it was totally worth it. And it did something like a couple acres for that tiny bottle. And those are the main supplies. Now you can get um, other things you'll see throughout the steps, but those are the ones that you want to source uh, right away and not not really start the renovation until you have them. Now before you go around killing off your lawn, get a long screwdriver. You can see here I'm using one that's about a foot long and go to any brown spots and start poking around. You can usually tell if there's something under there that is causing the brown spot. Now there's no sense in doing a renovation to only find out that those areas are going to die anyways because of the uh, items that are underneath the ground. And you'd be surprised at what you can find. I uh, did this video and found a very large rock that I actually never knew was there. And it just shows the point that you, you can even grow decent grass on top of a large rock. Uh, but it just made a little brown spot that I always wondered, am I scalping it? Because it's right at the corner of my lawn and it was on the hill. And so I thought I was scalping it. But it turns out this whole time it was a large rock. So go around. You know, if nothing's there, it takes 10 minutes of your time to poke around. And it could save you headaches from having a beautiful renovation with a big brown spot. The tuna can test is an important step that most people skip over and don't understand. But it's something you can get the kids involved with and you don't really have to use a tuna can even though it's the easiest method. Very simply you just stick them all around the yard and you just put your sprinklers on and see how long it takes to fill up a tuna can. Now if you're doing something other than a tuna can you're looking to get an inch of water into that container and it's best to use a container that has straight sides which is why tuna cans are perfect they're an inch tall and they have straight sides so just makes it easy but run your sprinklers and see how long it takes to do a full inch that's going to help you tremendously when it comes to watering the new grass and your renovation, the, the whole process, you're going to want to make sure you have even coverage and know exactly how much water you need to put down when we say put down an inch of water. If you skip this step, you might be going based on time. And you know what? My sprinklers that I used to have took six hours to put down the same am amount of water that the new sprinklers put down in an hour. So if somebody says water for five minutes, you could be putting down way less water and then your seed doesn't germinate and then you wonder why it didn't work for you even though you watered for five minutes. It's not about the time, it's about how much water you're putting down. And the only really way you're gonna know is if you do the tuna can test. All right, so you've got everything ready to go. The only last thing you need to be concerned about is time. So it takes about a week or two to kill everything off and then Kentucky bluegrass can take a month to germinate and then you'll want about another month left after that before winter. So if you don't have enough time, just wait till the next year. You can do things to improve your soil while you wait and then um, you'll be better off. But if you do have time, all you have to do is spray your lawn with the glyphosate. Now it will kill anything green that it touches and so you got to be careful especially with borders with your neighbor's yard you can see I'm using string and wood to make sure I have a nice straight line down the border uh, you don't want to accidentally spray onto their yard even though you're going to be planting grass seed it's still going to be uh, upsetting to them if you accidentally kill it and have to seed part of their lawn during your renovation it also will look a lot better because most likely your lawn's going to look way better than theirs after this and so if you have a straight line of your renovation the border between the two properties is just going to look a lot better than having uh, weird curvy splotches if you're just spraying it by by hand um, the next thing to realize is we will be repeating this process so you're going to want to continue to water your, your lawn if you can daily so that way 
the weeds in the soil will grow up and then a few days later you can spray them with glyphosate again. After a few days you're going to notice the grass is starting to die. That's when you're going to want to start to mow it shorter and shorter. Uh, what I did is I tried to mulch mow it just to see if it would break down quick enough so you don't have to bag. It's actually better just to bag it so it was an interesting attempt. It would have been cool if it worked, but I actually don't recommend doing this because if it rains, then you end up with a mess. Um, so bag it, and what you want to do is you want to cut it down so that the grass isn't as tall, but you don't want to cut it short enough where any grass that you missed doesn't have any grass blades because that whatever green is left, you're going to spray it again and then you're gonna wait a few more days and mow again and you just keep repeating that until it looks dead dead. And so then once it looks dead dead like this, you're gonna to wanna to cut as low as your mower can go and rake up as many clippings as you can so that it's just dirt and a little bit of stubble left. All right, now this is gonna be the hardest day of it all because you've got a lot to do all in one time. Um, and if it rains, just adds to the excitement. So if it does rain when you're trying to put the seed or any other stuff down, just put a garbage bag over the top of your spreader to keep it from making the uh, product sticky and gumming up your spreader. And then for grass seed, you want to put it on the lowest setting, go around the border of your lawn, and then you want to go north to south and east to west and just keep going around until it's all used up. Um, you don't want to apply more than what's recommended for the amount, the type of grass you're planting because you can have overcrowding and disease and other issues. So I like to get the amount by weight of grass seed I need for the space I'm doing and just keep going back and forth, left and right, up and down, all around until it's all used up. So that way it's nice and even and the chances of missing spots that way is very slim. After you put the seed down, you're going to want to roll the seed into the lawn. I borrowed a roller from a friend. You can rent them. Um, you could also use a rake, the back of a rake, and press the seed in that way. But I found using the roller actually had much better results. Um, again, you're going to go north-south, east-west, over the whole lawn. It does take a lot of work, especially if you've got a hill. Uh, but it, I will say it made a big difference compared to other times I've done seeding. Now the next step is starter fertilizer. I prefer the Scott starter fertilizer with weed preventer. It has tenacity, also known as mesotrione in it. It will prevent weeds from growing while the grass is germinating and it's very useful especially if you're doing this in the springtime when that's when weeds normally germinate. Now it's important to remember to read the label and to apply correctly for the type of grass you're putting down. If you over apply it can turn your grass white which is harmless but it can be scary and ugly to see so just make sure you're putting down the correct amount and not overdoing it. Next, you're going to top dress your lawn. I prefer peat moss because it does a very good job of increasing germination and it's easy to tell when you need to water it again. Uh, it'll be a light brown if it's dry, a dark brown if it's wet. So if you see that it's a light brown in spots, just put the sprinklers on, run it a little bit, and you're good to go. I also find that it's very easy to spread around with a groundskeeper 2 rake. So it's just a lot easier than trying to do compost or some other type of top dressing. All right, so if you have any slopes or you deal with washout on a regular basis, you're gonna wanna use a tackifier. Now you put this over the peat moss and it'll basically stick the peat moss to the soil and you won't get washout. A few days after I applied this, we had rain for an entire week. That week we had one day where it was two inches of rain, another day where it was three inches of rain, and then another day with two inches of rain. So we had seven inches of rain in one week. It was insane and I kept checking it and nothing washed out. So well worth the money. You can find this usually at a local landscape supply shop. 
Um, hydro seeders use it, so if you go in and ask the guy, hey, I need some tackifier, they're going to know what, what you're talking about, and you just dilute it with a lot of water, spray it down as much as you can, and you're good to go. Totally worth it. Now it's time to water, water, water. Uh, the best way to do it is to use the peat moss as your guide. Anytime that it's looking light brown, just water it some more. I set my sprinkler to go off five times a day. Um, if you don't have automatic timers, you know, before work, after work works too. Just make sure it gets a good watering and adjust based on what the peat moss is telling you. It will stay dark brown if it's getting enough water. And there you have it. Eventually the grass will germinate. Kentucky bluegrass can take up to a month. So remember to keep watering it frequently for the full month. And then you're gonna gradually reduce the frequency but increase the amount of water you put down. So then eventually you'll be watering once a day, every other day, every three days, and you just slowly move to the once a week um, watering schedule that we normally use. And it's gonna look awesome. All right, so this is the lawn about a year later, and it looks amazing. The first year, it's really critical to make sure you water it frequently enough uh, in the summertime when it gets really hot. Um, obviously, you don't want to water it every single day, but you kind of have to break the rule of once a week watering in the peak of the summer months when the new grass is stressed. And then in the fall time, when it starts to recover, it's going to look awesome. And then year two, it's supposed to even look better than this. So subscribe to my channel. Uh, I give out tons of tips and tricks. I also have the playlist with all the steps that I took in, in full detail if you want to really go over it. Uh, but that's as simple as, as it is. It's not hard to have an awesome lawn. Uh, you don't have to hire professionals to do it if you don't want to. Uh, anybody can do it. So have fun. Enjoy your lawn. And... Uh, Feel free to post any comments below.